Good morning, everyone. Today we read the Gospel of Mark, chapter thirteen, first one to thirteen, the first section, and then first fourteen to thirty-one, and then first thirty-two to the end, three sections. So in these three sections, we can see something about the end of the age, the end time. So coming to this chapter, Jesus was closer to going up to the cross. So. His feelings must be complicated. As we've been reading the Gospel of Mark, we can really see that Jesus was lonely because nobody could understand what he was doing. Nobody could understand what he said. Even his disciples couldn't understand him. Everybody was thinking about something different, and Jesus. Had already started to prophesy that he was going to be crucified, and after three days he would be resurrected. But then, in the hearts of the disciples, they were wishing that Jesus would be coronated, and then Jesus entered into Jerusalem in a very glorious way. So what they saw, what just had happened, that Jesus was coronated and welcomed in Jerusalem. Was very different from what Jesus said, predicted that he would be given to the hands of the Gentile and be crucified, and then they felt that atmosphere was getting more and more strange, stranger because the scribes, the Pharisees,、uh, even the Herodians and the Sadducees came. All the political parties came to accuse Jesus, so that was a very strange atmosphere. So, with such a background, we come to look at this chapter to read this chapter, and we can feel the atmosphere then. And Jesus' words and actions must make the disciples felt very unsettled, like something must. It's, something was coming, but they couldn't explain it, and that message was very heavy. And they must be feeling very、uh, peaceful, like something big, huge, but not so good was going to happen. In the beginning of chapter thirteen, it says, "Then, as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, 'Teacher, see what men of stones and what buildings are here.' And Jesus answered and said to him, 'Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down.'" Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, "Tell us when will these things be, and what will be the sign when all these things will be fulfilled?" And Jesus, answering them, began to say, "Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, 'I am here,' and will deceive many. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled, for such things must happen. But the end is not yet, for nations." Will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be earthquakes in various places, and there will be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. But watch out for yourselves, for they will deliver you up to councils, and you'll be beaten in the synagogues. You'll be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all the nations. But when they arrest you and deliver you up, do not worry beforehand or premeet. Meditate what you will speak, but whatever is given you in that hour, speak that. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit, who, bro- who now brother will betray brother to death, and the father his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. So the disciples ask a strange question at this time. They ask, "Teacher, see what manner of stones and bu- what buildings are here?" Actually, the disciples they had been going to the temple with Jesus. So why would they ask this question now? Maybe they found the atmosphere strange and just、uh, started to talk about something, made a conversation. Maybe Jesus had become more silent those days because he was、uh, struggling his heart. Oh, his heart was heavy, knowing that he would be going up to the cross very soon. So 
the disciples gave such a comment at that time, and then Jesus just took the opportunity to teach them. So you know from his answer that Jesus started to think about the future more, not just going. Up to the cross, but also about the future, the end of the age, and Jesus answered them, "Do you see this great building? Not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down." So Jesus told them about the outcome later for the temple. So actually, in our faith, we should also. Have a future perspective. We only look at the present, look at now,、uh, focusing on the problems now. Then that will be problematic. Like if we have a headache, we try to cure headache, and we have、uh, pain in our legs, we heal our pain now. But no, actually, for Christianity, we should live. Uh, because of what we know about the future, we should. We shall prepare for the future as we live out today, and that's wisdom. But the question is, how do we know about the future? We need to look at the future from Jesus' perspective. Jesus had already told us about the future, so we should prepare for it. So today, in this chapter, everything is heavy. The We don't know how many disciples could really understand Jesus' message. Jesus just mentioned that the no stone, no one stone shall be left upon another in this temple, and then they left, and then they went to the Mount of Olives. So at least that would be、uh, half an hour walk, a forty-five minutes walk. So. During that time, in the journey when they walked, nobody talked, nobody, until they went up to the Mount of Olives and sat opposite the temple. And then Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, the closest to Jesus, asked him privately. Maybe on the on the way, the disciples were already discussing what Jesus meant, because at that time all the Jews did not believe. Or expect that the temple would be destroyed. They believed that the temple was a symbol of、um, the fact that they are the chosen people. And、uh, even Herod spent like sixty years to renovate the temple, to expand it, to rebuild it, and make it more glamorous. And So he spent a lot of time and money and effort and manpower to build this magnificent temple. So the Jews, they didn't believe that the temple would be destroyed because it was built with a great effort. Just like, can you imagine? You spend sixty years to build a house, and then suddenly you destroy it, or it will be destroyed. It will be hard to imagine. So for the disciples, that would not be possible. It was kind of、uh, ironic because actually, when Jesus said the temple would be destroyed and we built it in three days, he was referring to his own body. But that became、uh, something that. The religious leaders or the political leaders try to hold on to to accuse Jesus. So on the way, the disciples must be talking to each other. What does it mean? The temple is it going to be destroyed? How could that be? And、uh, the, our rabbi is the Messiah. The Messiah has come. How come the How come the temple would would be destroyed, and so no one dared to ask him until Jesus sat down on the Mount of Olives, and these four representatives came, 
to Jesus, and maybe other disciples urged them to go and ask Jesus. And so they asked Jesus privately, "Tell us when will these things be, and what will be the sign when all these things will be fulfilled?" They couldn't really. Understand what、uh, would that be? Something that would happen like a hundred years ago, a thousand years ago? It wouldn't be now or, or next year, right? So they had so many questions, and Jesus answered them and said, "Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying I am he, and he would will deceive many. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled, for such things must happen. But the And it's not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be earthquakes in various places, and there will be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. So Jesus told them about the signs of what would happen before the end of the age come. Uh, for example, at that time, actually, people like to look for signs. To get to know the future, like if they look at the clouds, see some red clouds, they would know that the storms will be coming. So they always ask for signs, and then they will get that they will go prepare for for the future. Like if they know that it's going to have a storm, then they would not go out to fish. So. They ask for the signs to prepare for the future. Actually, at that time, the Jews heard a lot of rumors that the Roman army、uh, was going to come to discipline them. And so they heard about rumors of wars. But then Jesus said, "Do not be troubled, for such things must happen. But the end is not yet. That means don't worry, don't be afraid, because God is here. When these things happen, the end is still not there yet. But the end will not come yet. Even when the Wars and earthquakes and famines and troubles appear, and Jesus told them, "Do not be afraid. Instead, what should they do? Would be watch out for themselves." Jesus was not too concerned of what would happen in the nature, like having earthquakes and famines, but what would really shake the Disciples was that they would be delivered up to councils, and they would be beaten in the synagogues. They would be brought before rulers and kings for Jesus' sake, for testimony to them. So they would be questioned and delivered. They would experience what Jesus would experience, and that was what、uh, Jesus said when two disciples went up to Jesus and asked, "Can we sit on?" One on your right hand side, the other on your left hand side, and then Jesus asked them, "Can you drink the cup that I drink?" And Jesus said, "Yes, you will drink the cup that I drink." So the disciples will experience what Jesus will experience to be delivered, to be persecuted, and to testify before the officials. And the governors, but Jesus said, "Do not be afraid. The Holy Spirit will give you words to say. So do not be afraid of the signs of the end of age. Do not be afraid of the persecution. But just know what we have to do. Make sure that we're following the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with us. He will be a help, and that's what's most important. Otherwise." We cannot overcome the disasters or pass over the disasters. So the Holy Spirit is very important. He is our counselor. He will help us to pass over the disasters and help us in the midst of the shakings. He is the source of our strength. And so if today, if we reject the Holy Spirit, when the disasters come, when the catastrophes come. Then we'll be in trouble because we will not know what to do. We are hard. It will be hard for us to endure or face the 
troubles. And so Jesus said, "Those who endure to the end shall be saved." So there's a promise here from God. God will help us to overcome all the disasters in the end time, especially. It says here, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and these are the beginnings of sorrows. Which means, in the end time, the disasters will be greater than these. This cannot be compared with what would happen. So when we read this, oh, the nation rise against nation and earthquakes and then famines. These are only the beginnings.、Uh, so what are the greater troubles? Jesus didn't mention. But something greater would happen that、uh, no one has experienced since the creation of the world. But everyone would be shocked and shaken. But the main point is the message is we need to hold on tightly to God. Then we don't need to be afraid. In the midst of all these troubles, God will not abandon us. The Holy Spirit will help us. So we need to hold on tightly to the Holy Spirit. He's the most precious one we have. Otherwise, our future、um, we cannot、uh, go have peace.、Uh, the main point is we'll be saved as we rely on God and follow the Holy Spirit. And this is what we should start learning today. That will be the greatest hope for us in the end of the age. So now let's look at the next section, verse fourteen to thirty-one. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the house top not go down into the house, nor enter to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to his get to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies. In those days, and pray that your flight may not be in winter, for in those days there will be tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the creation, which God created until this time, not ever shall be. And unless the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom He chose, He shortened the days. Then, if anyone says to you, "Look, he is the Christ," or "Look, he is there," do not believe it, for false Cries and false prophets will rise and show signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. But take heed, see, I have told you all things beforehand. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars of heaven will fall and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds, from the farthest part of earth to the farthest part of heaven. Now learn this parable from the fig tree when. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. So Jesus said, when you see these signs, you will see. The end of the age coming. When we read these scriptures today, we see that a lot of what Jesus had predicted has come to pass already. So we should always have the attitude that、uh, we're actually closer to the end time than the disciples back then, because、um, all this, and、uh, many of these signs have come to pass already. So we must watch out, stay alert, be prepared that we may see Jesus any time. And as we continue to read on, we'll see more clearly. Jesus said, "These things will happen." Jesus said,、uh, "You would see the abomination of desolation." Desolation means a lot of destruction, and abomination is something that God hates, like、uh, idols, and、uh, it was standing where it ought not, which refers to the temple, actually.
And Jesus predicted earlier, prophesied that no one stone would stay where it it was, and so something that shouldn't be standing in the temple would be there, and it, this prophecy would come to pass in、uh, A.D. seventy. And Titus, the general commander, he came to Jerusalem. He surrounded the city, and in the end, he destroyed the temple and burned it. And why no one stone remain in this place? Because when the when the temple was burned, all the gold was melted on the stone. So Titus commanded the stones be removed, so they could take the gold away. So, for the Jews, the destruction of the temple was just like the end of the world. They couldn't believe what they saw. The temple was destroyed. You have to understand the greatest difference between the the Jews, the Israelites, and us was that the center of the life was the temple, especially the elderly. When they saw the temple destroyed. The elderly would think, "Where shall we go next Sabbath? How shall we have Sabbath? There's no more temple. How could we live on? How could we survive without the temple?" So, isn't God not here now? If God is not here, what's the future for Israel? So it was like they lost all their hopes and. Jesus said, "Let him who is on the house top not go down into the house, nor enter to take anything out of his house." So one day, the temple in Jerusalem will be destroyed, and that was a very that was very hard for the the Jews to imagine, because usually. If there's a war, people would go into the city. Those living in the villages would all go to the city because there's an army and city war in the city. They would all hide in the city. But Jesus said the opposite: Do not go into the city. The city and the temple cannot be safeguarded. So if you're on the field, do not go back to the city. The city is not safe. Run away, flee. Those who are on the housetop do not go inside the house. At that time, they have a flat rooftop, so they can、uh, try the food on the rooftop, and they would take a bath like Bathsheba on the rooftop, and they had two two staircases, one inside the house and one outside the house, to go onto the rooftop, and so Jesus told them. Do not go back into the house. Take the staircase and go to the street. And Jesus reminded them,、uh, in such a time, do not stand in the temple. And they should run and flee. And those who are pregnant and nursing babies will be in trouble because they cannot run as fast. Basically, what he meant was, it's better if you can run fast. So ask that it will not come. This time will not come when you have to flee during the winter because it may snow in the winter. It it rains or snows. When it's muddy, it's hard to run away. That will be trouble. So what Jesus meant was, be prepared, stay alert. One day, the commander Titus will come when you see all these things. Run away, and actually, a very famous Jewish historian Josephus, he looked up the historical records, and he said some Christians fled when Commander Titus came, and.、Uh, These Christians said that they heard from God the message that they should flee, so they went to the wilderness, and they kept a lot of lives there. So what Jesus said was true. 
it came to pass. It was a help and protection to the church. And what we should pay attention to is the end. It says there will be troubles, tribulation, such as not been since the beginning of the creation, which God created until this time, not ever shall be. And unless the Lord has shortened those days, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect sick, whom He chose, He shortened the days. So God allowed all these disasters and troubles to come, these tribulations to come. God had His good will and plan. The goal of the tribulation was for the Jews to repent, the elect to repent, and God has mercy in the in the midst of tribulation for the sake of the elect. He has shortened the days of tribulation, decreased it into three and a half years. If Jesus didn't. Shorten these days. No one could be safe in the end time. So you see, Jesus has never, or God has never forsaken His elect. He would help the elect, and so He would shorten the days of tribulation. From so, from another perspective, we should pray for the elect and. Also, the Israelites. If there weren't any elect here on earth, we cannot imagine what would happen in this world. For their sick, the elect sick, he will shorten the days of tribulation, and everyone can experience salvation. If there were no elect on earth, then God would not shorten these days of tribulation. So, from another perspective, we see that、uh, Israel is our blessing, protection, even though they were against God. It's very meaningful that they are here. If it weren't because of the assistance,、um, more disasters would come. And tribulations will be more severe. So the elect of the people is a blessing for us. We should look at it from this perspective, instead of hating them and wanting to destroy the Israelites. Actually, God's heart and will is that they will rise up to be the blessings of the nations. This will surely come to pass because of this elect. We know that、uh, these. Days of tribulations will be shortened, and then Jesus reminded them again: there will be false cries and false prophets and deception in the end times. So we must stand firm. But after these, verse twenty-five, the stars of heaven will fall, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And、uh, Describing what will happen in the sky,、uh, which actually refers to. The spiritual world, even the spiritual world, the heavens will be shaken. God's judgment will come, and then the sun and light will not have any light. What the stars of heaven represents the heavens, and they will be shaken and fall down even. And then the Son of Man will come with great power and glory. In the clouds. So after all this tribulation, the heavens will be shaken, and Jesus will come back with great power and glory. And when he comes back, he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds, from the furthest part of earth to the furthest part of heaven. So when he comes back again, he will gather his elect. He will gather the chosen people of God when Jesus. Comes back. So Jesus said, "Learn something from the parable of the fig tree." The Israelites knew how to look at those signs in the nature, like when the branch of branches of the fig trees become tender and put forth leaves, they know that the summer is near. So Jesus said, "In the same way, when you see the nations attack nations." And、uh, the temple be destroyed when all these things happen. You will know that the time is near. The Son of Man is at the door,、uh, brothers and sisters. This would happen in 70 A.D. And now, in the New Testament. As New Testament time believers, we know that we are really closer to the end time. 
than the disciples back then. Jesus is really coming back soon. Jesus said that heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Heaven is singular here; it's not heavens, so it's not plural. The earth sure refers to our world. The heaven is the first heaven, and the first heavens, the first heaven will be destroyed, will pass away. But Jesus said, "My words would by no mean, means pass away," and that's a prophecy. There was a prophecy of Jesus teaching the disciples to stay alert, to keep watch, to know the signs. And then, verse thirty-two. But of that day and now, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. It's like a man going to a far country, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each his work, and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Watch therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming in the evening, at midnight, at the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. So Jesus gave a summary to what he said, and this chapter most important point is here, verse thirty-two to thirty-seven, and、uh, Jesus said, "Of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels, nor the Son." Jesus said, "I don't even know. No one in heaven knows. Only Father, God knows. That's that His absolute sovereignty and authority. That day will surely come, but no one knows." But Jesus said, "I've told you about the signs of the end time. When you see the signs, that means this day will come any time, in a time that you may not expect it. Which means no one can predict the time. So stay alert, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is." And then Jesus gave a parable, just like someone going to a far country. To a journey、uh, to a foreign place, and he commanded his servants to do this and that, and commanded those who keep、um, who are the doorkeeper to keep watch. He didn't tell them when. He didn't tell them when he would return. He could come any time, and the time of coming back just depends on what the. A man think is good, so the servants might, must keep watch for the master. They they would not know when the master will come back. Maybe at midnight in the evening, in the morning, no one knows except the master. He can make the choice when to come home. But the point is, if he comes back and finds you sleeping, then it's not good. So keep watch. Well, of course, that doesn't mean that、uh, the normal sleeping time. But if you should be working, but you are lazy, then you'll be in trouble when the master comes home at this time. You will be, you will not be able to give account to that. So Jesus used this parable to tell the disciples: when we see all these signs coming, we need to. Be careful to stay alert, be prepared, because we know that our Lord may come any time. And the question is, when we come, when He comes, can we face Him? Can we give to Him what、uh, can please Him? Just like this. Servants, the master commanded them to do a lot of things. So when the master comes, he will surely ask, "I've commanded you to this and do this and that. Have you done it?" As we、we'll、continue to read, Jesus commanded us to make disciples of all the nations. He's given us the great commission. So when he comes back, we should give an account of that. So can we reply him at, in that time? Or shall we tell him, "Oh Lord, I have earned a lot of money. My my money is here, but God will surely ask you, 'Have you loved God and loved others?' And 
is the heavenly kingdom waiting for the U.S. dollars? So we, this is worthy for us to reflect. So Jesus said, "Therefore I tell you, and everyone, keep watch, stay alert, watch, because the time is coming. It's coming." And、uh, Jesus was going up to the cross soon, and the end time is coming too. The beginning of the disaster tribulation is coming sooner. It was closer to the time when the temple would be destroyed, and now is the time that、uh, Jesus will come back again. And the question is: Have we prepared ourselves? Have we prepared ourselves in our life? How do we use our time? Have we prepared well for this time? We have prepared for so many things for this life. And what about our future for our eternal life? Have we prepared anything for it? That we are going to see Jesus. Otherwise, if Jesus will come suddenly, it will be more pitiful than everyone. So let's ask the Lord to help us, so we can keep watch and stay alert. Amen. Jesus, we don't want to see anyone but you. So let our eyes focus on you again, so that we don't just look at now the present, look at what's surrounding us, or look at the society, the tribulations. Because in the Gospel of Mark, chapter thirteen, you are telling us today the rumors of wars and the rumors,、uh, wars and rumors of war. We do not need to be troubled because they will come, but the end has not come. So, Lord, take away all our fears. There are so much、uh, wars and divisions and pandemic. We confess we have fears in our hearts, but when we look upon you right now, Lord, help us to know that when the nations rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, there will be earthquakes in various places, and there will be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. Jesus, you have told us all these things already. All these chickens have been prophesied for you, and you are telling us not to be afraid, but to keep watch. To keep watch, Lord Jesus, we thank you. These are just like women giving birth. After giving birth, that's great hope and joy. We will see the Son of Man coming in great glory and power. So after the tribulation, we'll see the Son of Man, Jesus, you coming back in great power and glory. So we don't need to be afraid of the tribulations because you have told us already, and help us in the midst of all these shakings to stay alert, keep watch, just as what the pastor said. We don't want to look at the present. We want to prepare for the future. Want to have good time management because the time of Jesus coming again will be closer. Help us to see the future and live today. So today we can prepare for the future, prepare our hearts, Lord, through the script with the scriptures, not to look at these disasters or tribulations, but look at you, Jesus, that you're coming back soon, and only those who will endure to the end shall be saved. So we need to endure to the end. Lord Jesus, help us in the midst of the great tribulations, not to be deceived by the false prophets and false teachers of false Christ, because of、uh, false signs and miracles, and be deceived, but protect our hearts through an everyday morning devotion. Help us to know you truly, not to go away from you. Help us not to be worried, but rely on the Holy Spirit. And the disciples had would be taken to would be arrested, and they would be delivered. But they should not be afraid, because Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit will speak for them. 
And so right now, let's ask the Holy Spirit to fill us. So no matter what tribulation we face, we'll know how to stand in the midst of the shakings because we have the Holy Spirit. We can endure to the end because we have the Holy Spirit. He's our strength. So Holy Spirit, we cry out to you through the scriptures. Through the Gospel of Mark, chapter thirteen, we know that the, in the end time there will be more disasters. But Jesus has told us, so we don't need to be afraid. But we need to be endure to the end. We need strength. Holy Spirit, come, fill us, help us, and renew us. We want to rely on you, Holy Spirit. Come, work in our lives. Move. In us, we look upon you. Fill us more, Holy Spirit. Lord, prepare us for the end time. Help us to follow you alone, do and not be deceived. In the midst of disasters and tribulations, we rely on you. Lord, help us to prepare for the future. So we live out today according to your will. Renew us, Lord. Help us to follow you alone and not be deceived. Fill us, Holy Spirit, right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Help us and remind us every teachings and reminders of Jesus. Help us to stay alert and keep watch when we are near the end times, so that we won't be deceived and we rely on the power of the Holy Spirit, so we can endure to the end. Thank you, Holy.、Spirit. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for hearing our prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Gospel of Mark, chapter thirteen, verse thirty-two. But of that day and hour, no one knows—not even the angels in heaven, not the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. Jesus told the disciples, one day you will see that no one stone will stay in its own place. So keep watch, be alert. So brothers and sisters, if Jesus tells you, you see I C C I F C came down, and all the high rises. Comes down, and the sound of the trumpet of the end time will blow, be blown, and those who cry out to God day and night, and to those who surrender everything to God for His kingdom, and they will be taken up to Jesus when the trumpet blows, and everything under their feet. All the high rises will come to the ground, and only those who are faithful will meet with Jesus in the clouds. Are you have you prepared for this picture when the end time trumpet will be blown? Are you those one of those who will be taken up to heaven and meet up with Jesus? And so Jesus said. What I say to you, I say to all, watch, watch. Verse thirty-one: Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. So let's pray for our own hearts. Jesus, may you help us, give us a heart that will stay alert, and put this picture into our hearts and spirit, so that we know. One day, heaven and earth will pass away. One day, the earth will change in front of you. Anything, everything will be burned up. But those who offer for you and the people of God, in the at the time when the trumpets will be blown in the end time, it will be the time when we will be taken up. To meet up with you in the clouds, so give us such a hope, because we see this picture in the end time. Today we will stay alert and keep watch. We will prepare ourselves, prepare our lives to prepare for this day to come.
And only the Father knows this time, not even the Son. So, Lord, help us to stay alert and prepare, and help us to rely on you, cry out to you day and night, and help everyone in New Crop to be prepared to see you in your time. Thank you, Lord. Hear our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Our morning devotion will end here. May the Lord bless you all.